like I said last week, I got called a train falling moron by a very famous trader. At least I'm pretty sure it was him. And it really kind of messed with my mind for a while. And I was a little kind of bummed out, especially because I was very enthralled with this, with this individual. And he was kind of like a hero. And it's kind of like, it's, it's a great story and don't meet your heroes, right? <laughs> Unless your hero's me. I, I'm a pretty cool guy. You know, we'll, I'm kind of a guy's guy. You know, we could drink beer and hang out, whatever. Anyway, or we can go, you can, go, you can help me uh, drag a tree out the woods. Now, once the, the TFM catches an elusive trend, and as I've said a thousand times, it's probably 20 years ago now or 15 years ago, speaking in Dallas, Peter Moffey invited me over there to speak to a technical analysis group. And I, I talked about the fact that it could be a little streaky. And he goes, well, you know, I use the word streaky. It makes it sound a little too elusive. And I thought about it quite a bit. This he gave me a lot of good constructive criticisms, criticism, and I decided to leave that word streaky in there and even add the word elusive because it takes a while to catch a trend, and when you catch one, you need to ride that trend until the end, and that's days, weeks, months, or years, or maybe just hours. Who knows? But as you can see, somebody was asking me like, "How long are you hold the crypto?" I'm like, "As long as I can," and I've had a few that I've held for months. And that's probably the, the world record for me, or anyone for that matter. Now, one thing that I found this slide by accident tonight, and this is from Trading Full Circle, there's always a reason to exit a trade and rarely a reason to stay. I need to put Trading Full Circle on sale. If you become a gold member of DaveLandry.com, you will get Trading Full Circle for free within about a year, I think. Uh, so there is a delay in that. So you can get it free if you want to get a jump start on that. Shoot me an email, daviddavidlearn.com, and I'll, I'll work something out with you. Anyway, I found this slide again by accident, looking for some other stuff for tonight's presentation. There's always a reason to exit a stock and rarely a uh, reason to stay. And as I've said quite a bit, the in fact, just recently, somebody said, well, I follow this guru, and he gets out of the market whenever it consolidates or gets choppy or whatever. And that's fine, but you're never going to catch a longer term trend if you always get out when there's a little adversity. And this one here, I remember sitting this thing for like two or three weeks and being kind of underwater thinking, is this thing ever going to go? But if you're following a system, you have to follow the system. The trend following moron has a system in place. He has his money management in place. He has to follow it because other people are counting on him to follow it, lead by example, right? But I remember it's pretty tough. And then finally it banged out that IPT. And then what happened? It died out forever. It just went sideways for what's this? One, two, three months nearly. Okay. That's hard to hold a stock that long. And truth be told, I think it'd be tough for me if I didn't have this educational business to remind me to practice what I preach. It'd be really hard for me to sit in the stock for three months. Like, oh, it's dead money. I got to get out of this thing. But like, no, Dave, follow your plan. If you're telling everybody else to follow the plan, then you should follow it too. And that's another thing too, by the way, is hold yourself accountable. If you're going to trade in a certain way, then be brave enough to involve somebody else with your trading and say, this is what I'm going to do. And this is where I did it. And as I've said before, I, <laughs> one of my clients occasionally struggles with his trading, as we all do, by the way. And I said, what if you shared the service with your wife it told her you're gonna follow this guy, and sometimes he's not so hot, and sometimes he is, but longer term he does okay. And I'm gonna follow the plan exactly. He said, "Would you would you do that with your wife?" He goes, "No, no, no that would end the marriage." So he knew, and as Livermore said years ago, a speculator sometimes makes mistakes and knows he is making them. And as I often say, you know what you're doing wrong, you know what you're doing wrong, provided you have a little bit of experience. But anyway, as you can see, we let that stop widen out on this. It's not exactly the scale, but it's somewhere around 68 now. And as the market moves in our favor, we bring the stop up. When the stock goes sideways, we leave the stop where it is. And then we let it loosen back up. And that's so we can ride out a longer term trend. And once you get the initial profit target off, as I preach, then you're free rolling. That's a term that Charlie Kirk gave me on the positions that have hit the initial profit target because technically barring over that gaps of course the worst you could do is is stop out at break even and you have a chance for a home run 
and that trade I just showed you, we put on way, 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 way last July. Now a lot of people say, well, Dave, you got we should get out of the market when when the you should get out all your stocks when the market gets iffy. It's like, well, if you're if you're trend following like the TFM 10% system where you're you have a position on like right now i have 100 q's from 319.49 and for s and g's i put on that trade i've been riding that thing since uh i forget when it triggered last summer sometime if you have a, a, a market timing system and you're in the in the index or something to by all means get out but we've had a lot of spills since last summer and somehow that stock has survived that length of time and i hate to use the word hope but hopefully that will continue to happen so you have to be willing to stick it out and follow your plan longer term much easier said than done now if you're going to be a trend following moron you can't care about what the company does you can only care about making money and you almost it almost sounds a little selfish and in some ways maybe it is okay but you can't care if a company might be doing something in your eyes that is immoral or not environmentally friendly or whatever. And um, and I and I hate to I'm not picking this guy per se, but it just makes for such a good example. One of my clients, when this stock began to take off, this was a coal stock, and I was asking him about like how'd you do in ARLP, whatever. And he's like, Oh, I didn't take it because it's a coal stock and I don't believe in coal. It's like, okay, well, how you know, doesn't it take a lot of coal to fire up the electric cars? You know, <laughs> I don't know. And uh, that's not political, I think that's just a fact. But anyway, he didn't take the trade, and that's a bit of a bummer because he missed out on a really good trade. So I forget the exact numbers here, close to 20k. And that's on a one or decay hypothetical account. Now I did actually take these trades, and I, I always, at least in one account, try to take them exactly as I recommend them with the same exact share size. So if somebody asks me about, hey, wh where'd you get filled on whatever, I can I can let them know and I can show them a real fill and let them know. But anyway, so he didn't take it. So here's the thing: if you if you do want to be I don't know if the word is altruistic, but if, if that's a word or that's the word, then just trade like a trader, okay? And let's say you make $20,000 at a coal company, well, go plant some trees or something or give that money to some environmental cause or whatever the case may be. You're, and, and I know I'm getting into morals and things like that and, and feelings and all, but think about it. Here's, here's one way to kind of wrap your head around it because I might not like some of these companies and what they're doing either but if you are paying me as a trader and a technician to find things that i think have potential then i'm not i can't confuse the issue with facts and i have to eliminate those feelings about how i might feel about the company now if you see a viable setup you you have to take it okay if everything fits if it's uh in a persistent trend or it's a hot ipo and it pulls back and it's made a pretty big run before pulling back then you have to take it you can't confuse the issue with facts like we talked about last week and i remember with aso okay it's like that's academy sports i'm like a brick and mortar sports place are you kidding me who shops at academy anymore when you have amazon and all this other stuff well i didn't realize that people would be buying kayaks and all kind of sporting equipment because they were sick of being cooped up in the house but this was one of our bigger winners and it was a stock that i didn't want to buy now i did not take the buy at d setup because in my ipo trading i kind of like to have like what's the story fad of glory I like it to be some kind of exciting stock that's gonna it, it doesn't have to they don't have to be splitting the atom right it could be splitting the burrito or something and but if it's a hot stock for some reason fad wise or if it's kind of a glory type of thing then i'll go in and take those pioneer setups and i might be buying as early as the close or near the close of day five in this particular case it's like okay dave it's a brick and mortar retailer i'm not going to take the buy a d pattern but as a good little trend following moron, 
I have to take a secondary setup. In other words, the first deep retracement, the first pullback, and that was the setup here. I'm like, geez, a brick and mortar retailer? Well, here it goes. Let's just see what happens. And to my surprise, it worked out pretty good, as you can see. And again, that was on a hypothetical 100K account, but I should have that exact trade to show you. So Jeff says he still owns ARLP. Oh, how'd you ride out all zigs and zags? Yeah, I saw one of them. I had to pull it up in the live charts. I saw it the other day. I'm like, wow, look at that thing. It's still doing pretty good. Now, if you're going to be a trend-following moron, you have to learn how to be clinically dispassionate. And that's easier said than done. And one of my favorite quotes on being clinically dispassionate comes from Larry Williams. To make money as a trader, you have to not care. As soon as you start caring, you have an emotional attachment. It's counterintuitive. The more you care, the less you make. The more you're clinically dispassionate and less attached to your trades, the more you will make. It's really quite simple, but very hard to accept. And I'm not bragging because I'm not setting the world on fire, right? But that's why I am doing well in crypto right now because I don't give a shit, okay? You have to be really flippant, okay? You have to be prudent in your money management and prudent in your stock selection and all these other things. But once you place the trade, you have to follow along. So Jeff says $2.70 a year in dividends. I account for that on my protective stops. Oh, that's cool. Sweet. Okay. So, so what he's saying, and it's something I, that I didn't do because it's a it's a problem I never really had that much. Maybe once or twice I've done it before a little bit. So what he's saying is he's got $2.70 of dividends. So he's opened up that stop that that much a year to allow for a little movement because the stock is gonna is gonna come down. So that's a very good point, Jeff. And and you know, you learn something new every day. And uh, you just reminded me of something that I, that I need to be cognizant of because if I am in a longer term trend following mode and the stock throws off dividends, which is a rarity, would I was shocked when all of a sudden this money appeared in my account. I'm like, what's this money from? You know. So yeah, you you do have to adjust your stops, or you can adjust your stops down when that happens. But in order to make money as a trader, you have to learn how not to care. And, and and this is a very powerful, if you don't walk away with anything tonight from me, take this from Larry Williams and use it to your advantage or just try to do this. And, and again, it's easier said than done. Now, the trade volume moron knows that he has an edge, but once a trade is placed, he knows that it's completely out of his hands. And it's it's a very Socratic type of thing. The Socratic thinking is you know that you know nothing. So once you put that trade on, it's completely out of your hands. Think about all the variables that could happen. In fact, think about yourself as a microcosm. I tend to come in the office after I have a nice lunch or a nice breakfast or whatever, and I make trades I probably shouldn't do just because I'm feeling good. What does that have to do with the price of tea in China? What does that have to do with technical analysis, right? Or, or, because I'm seeing something that might not be there, and I think it's a good idea. I might get a margin call on my account, and I might have to liquidate some positions, okay? So that that rhyme or reasoning has nothing to do with the overall market. It's very hard to draw those connect those dots, okay? I might need money for taxes or for whatever, so I might have to take a chunk out of trading and I might have to sell some stocks to do that. People buy and sell stocks for a variety of reasons, as Marion McClellan once said, Tom McClellan's mother. Some people buy when they have money, some people sell when they need money, and other people use more sophisticated methods. So everybody uses timing, so to speak. So there's all these different variables and, and, you know, shit happens, right? A lot of stuff can happen between now and then. And that's why I borrowed that line from Greg Morris, all predictions about the future and a lot of shit can happen between now and then. So again, when you have your edge, you know your edge is going to work over time, but you also don't know if it's going to work every time, obviously. If it worked every time, you'd never see my fat ass. And one of my members in my Facebook group was a little upset because it, it I was too, okay? <laughs> like a, like a, like a, like I told him in the comments, it's like I, I, I 
I actually personally insulated my my walls very poorly, I might add, because I I like to drop that. I don't like to drop F bombs, but I do have a habit of dropping F bombs when I trade. Here's a uh, in fact, uh, one of you guys uh, was Mike Peterson sent me this F bomb here, and I, I don't drop it. I can't. It's pretty pretty heavy. <laughs> Yeah, drop an F bomb, but don't let it ruin your life. And that's the other thing too. And there's some things I'll flesh out over time. Is uh, this one obviously the K and F turned into a nice winner, 81%, much better than poking the eye, obviously. And these other ones in here having it the IPT, and this one here so far is failing miserable, miserably. But I have to follow the plan to see how it shakes out. And it's okay to drop an F bomb or two, but try not to get too caught up. And any one particular trade kind of goes back to the Larry Williams thing. You have to not care. And, and believe me, that's pretty hard. And the other thing, too, and, and, and we're going to get to all these things over time, but you have to realize is, you know, it is streaky, like I said, and it is elusive, like I said. So we don't know which one of these stocks is to turn into a big winner. Now, this one worked out. And this one particular stock might save the portfolio for the next year, okay, or next six months or whatever the case may be. Slight exaggeration, but you kind of get the idea. And as I've said a thousand times, it, it, sometimes I'll be doing really great in the service and we'll have three out of four winners, you know? And I'm like, well, did you get this one? Did you get this one? Did you get that one? They're like, no, but I took that turd you recommended and I can't make any money. It's like, well, because you missed the ones that that took off. And 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 again, I don't want to make it sound elusive, but that's one of the things about trend following. In fact, the, the trend following moron thing is gonna is gonna mesh in with with a presentation in my head, and I've been writing a lot about about what it means to be a trend follower. And being a trend follower is tough, but it's the only way to make money trading. You have to capture a trend.